Good evening. I'm Jeffrey Magnavita. Welcome to um, Eminent Psychotherapist Revealed, a product of um, Psych Incubator. Uh, we are very pleased to be here um, with uh, Dr. Howard Little. And before I introduce him, I just want to introduce my co-host, Kristen Osborne, and our guest host, uh, Dr. Barbara Ingram, who is um, a professor at Pepperdine University and a scholar and a uh, researcher. Um, so let me, let me tell you a little bit about Howard and then we'll get, kind of get into things tonight and uh, I think we'll have a fun time here. So Howard is a professor of public health and sciences and psychology at University of Miami. I have had the fortune of knowing Howard probably for the last 15 years, um, mostly in professional um, domains. Howard and I have had some of the most interesting conversations uh, at the APA and other conferences. Uh, so I, I know you're gonna have a lot of fun with uh, 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 us tonight and, and learn a lot. He, uh, Howard has received a number of awards. He is known as a scientist practitioner and uh, has done um, major research in multidimensional family therapy, which is an internationally recognized evidence-based treatment uh, for young people and their families. And as, we, as most of you who are therapists know, and work with adolescents, these can be the most challenging ones, um, especially the, um, the ones that Howard worked with. I have had the pleasure and privilege of actually seeing Howard work. And uh, he is a gifted therapist who, I, he has this kind of ability to, to adoles adolescent whisper. He is able to enter their, 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 um, their experience, uh, domain and, and meet them and pull them into some synergy in a way that is, I don't know how you manualize it, but maybe we can talk about that. Um, so um, without any further ado, let's, uh, let's get going here. Thank you, Howard, for joining us. Hello, I'd like to just... Go ahead, sorry. I'm gonna jump in right away with the first question, a nice open-ended question. Um, could you tell us about multidimensional family therapy with a specific population that you're such an expert in, and that's adolescent substance abusers? Yeah, so this, this comes about <clears throat> way long before, you know, it had a name. You know, I, I, I finished school uh, in 74. I had, uh, I had a counseling psychology background. I had good family therapy training up to that point. I felt that it was exciting and difficult and adolescence, uh, that, that didn't really, uh, I suppose it moved me then, but it was after I finished and uh, was teaching for a, a couple of years at Temple University and really was faced with how much I did not know. And uh, yeah, I could entertain a bunch of master's students and get doctoral students engaged sort of in there, but, but it was when this announcement came out of something new, they were starting down there at 34th and Civic Center Boulevard in Philadelphia, right next to the Children's Hospital. It was an externship, one of the first of its kind in the country. And uh, it just happened to be uh, being taught, led by uh, Salvador Mnuchin and Jay Haley. So uh, this was 1977 and their stuff was, uh, now it's just coming out, really hitting the psychotherapy world. Family therapy uh, was beginning really its, its salad days, I guess, for 10 or whatever, let's say 10 or 15 years. It sort of went that way. But that changed everything for me because I was around the, the, those two uh, people. They were gifted uh, just, you know, intellectual, intellectually, they could really talk about therapy in a way that is very straightforward. The, the writings of those people, as an example, and colleagues that I came to know, Braulio Montalvo, this is very straightforward. You put that book in, put those things in anybody's hands, come on, and, and you could get them close to being able to do an interview. So the values that they had, the way they understood psychotherapy, uh, uh, it, it was um, uh, the magic that they, that Mnuchin could do. Jay wasn't really a therapist at that point, but it was really Mnuchin and the magician. And sure, sure it was all, it was all true. The intimidation, we were scared to death. We wound up sort of talking like, like him, trying to be, you know, little 
Argentinian uh, accent uh, people would say the exact same things that he would say to him, did you have any trouble getting here? You know, it became sort of embarrassing when you tried to do that with an Argentinian accent and you were from Northern <laughs> New Jersey. So for me, you know, but it was really, uh, so pardon the expression, died and gone to heaven. And everything changed for then. I, everything changed at that point. Uh, the spark of what, yeah, it was about family therapy, but it was about what therapy could be. It was about bringing your guts into the room. It was about, right, you want to call it self of the therapist, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that I, came, I, I came on a path uh, to start to ask myself, gee, I wonder if you could have it both ways. The both ways being, you know, the sum and the, the, the self of you, what can you bring to them? But what is it that you know? What, you're just an interesting person? You're gonna get, you tell them jokes? Well, you act like a teenager? No, no, that's not what therapy is about. You have to know something. And indeed, these decades have gone by and look at how much we know now about teenagers and more specifically teenagers in context. I mean, that changed everything as well, that clinical training. And again, so much of this stuff for me was right time, right place. I mean, I wound up in, in Philly, child guidance clinic, did that training. The adolescent development, uh, developmental psychopathology field explodes 10, 15, 20 years of research for we clinicians and treatment developers to understand and bring it into the work, uh, the personal side of things, you know, the long-term way. What if we stay with this in a long-term way? What happens to your thinking about therapy? And then again, right time, right place. In the Let's 70s and the right 80s. Right time, right place. Because I'm listening to you with right time, right place. And I'm thinking, why you? <laughs> uh, what, what was it about you that arrived at that time in that place in order to yeah. learn through, I right. mean, Nucci and Hallie, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. remember their videotapes. Yeah. The most videotapes of psychotherapy that I ever saw. And it was working with families. Yeah. I mean, families, not individuals, families with all these different people in the room and talk about a family whisperer and, yeah, and like, yeah. A, yeah. So what, what was it about you yeah. that arrived at that time? I am, in that right place? I, you know, I am an extremely curious, why did that happen? What did that really happen? Oh, uh, they don't look like they want therapy and wait, there's a half an hour that goes by. And why is the mood so different in this room? And gee, yeah, I want to do good and I want to be good, but you know, wanting things and having potential, that's not enough. I mean, you know, you want to, I, I can dig in and really work, you know, and in those days, I, uh, really my whole career, I, I am a worker. I love work. Howard, it, Howard. In all of these years, it wasn't about work. It was about, wow, Howard. this stuff is Howard. so hard Howard. for you to get Howard. good. Howard, you got to change. Howard, can you, yeah. I am dying to know, like, can you, you know, I've, I've watched you work and I've read uh, about multidimensional family therapy and I, I actually got to, to, um, to uh, have a little bit of uh, seminars with uh, Salvador Mnuchin down in Philadelphia yeah. when he was yeah. practicing. And I too was awestruck. And I agree with you about the simplicity of his book, Structural Family Therapy. It was, it was, I slept with it under my pillow for years because I could look into that. I was working with a lot of adolescents and families at the time. And I worked at a hospital that, that had an adolescent model, family model. Um, and I, I love the way he could actually talk about what he does. So the question for you is, tell me what multi-dimensional family therapy actually does. Right. Is, is uh, it, what, what do we do if we're a multidimensional family therapist? Uh, wh what you do is that you enhance development. Okay, that's very that's beautiful. General, that's beautiful. How, yeah, but how, 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 like, my daughter just graduated from MSW in social work and she did a paper on it. And I still am not sure. So, yes. You help people what grow. Do you, what yeah. do you do, though? What do you do? Help them you grow. Start with where? Oh you know, to give you something that you have heard and you've written probably a hundred or so time, times. Does this sound familiar? You start with where they are at, but here's the, you know, but here's the catch. The catch is to become an expert on motivation. And motivation is 
in one sense, an individual concept or thing. Yeah, it could be said to reside and have a life of its own, quote, inside of me. But there's an interpersonal, uh, we're talking about Mnuchin, let's invoke it, dance, interaction to what motivation is. If my partner is unmotivated, I might be quote, motivated. I might give me a blood test and I got good, motiva good motivation level. But if she's low in motivation, if my child says, you know, I I'm gonna do what I wanna do. You have no authority over me. Or in one way or another, they say, this isn't working for me, me and you, me and this family, me, I wanna be in the world. I, those, are, those are sort of some extreme examples there. Howard, but how- you how become, Let me just say, when you, be, you have to become more or less an expert in development to be a, ther to be a therapist with teenagers. Right. Why? Because you are not just working, you know, go with teenagers. You work with them. What is MDFT? You work with many different units. Family so therapy in the so old days. So it's family systems? Family th no, this is important. Family therapy in the old days, in the classic days, it became widely misunderstood and it hurt its own development. Why? Because it became reductionistic in this very odd way that it said it wasn't going to be. Family therapy said, we're not gonna be reductionistic. We're not gonna focus, over focus on the individuals. We know that people exist in context, principally in families, those relationships matter. They matter every day. They matter at every stage of human development. So that idea, simple as it sounds, you take that idea and you think about it your whole career, you will change as a therapist. What will change is the people that you want to show up in front of you. You'll want to see teenagers, you want to see them alone, but you'll want to see the parent or caregiver. You'll find out that uh, uh, intergenerational issues may be quite silly and important with this case. You'll hear, so tell me who lives in the home again. Oh, so your brother lives there, the mom says. Um, and oh, wait, your mom lives there. Now I've got a couple of generations, I got three adults. What's the caregiving role in relation to those kids? The kids, so it, this, it's a, it's a therapy how, of like, units. Howard, like I, I'm listening to you and I agree with you 100%. I've worked with so many adolescents in my lifetime as a psychotherapist. It's all about motivation. And what I'm hearing, it's the motivation to connect with one another and with intergenerational trauma, all that does is create obstacles to connections. So, I mean, how, how do you motivate adolescents to like grow closer to themselves and to their family members? Like what, right. what is it that you see and, and how do you create that bridge? Especially, especially when you're working with a system that is so dysfunctional, that has poor communication skills and undifferentiated people Blah, 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 blah. The uh, functioning is in the eye of the beholder, including the self. Uh, you're seeing half of their uh, existence, half of their potential, half of their lives. You're seeing virtually none of their history. You know nothing until you start to ask about it, what they can do. And you bring them all in together and if you're reasonable to people, if you're engaged, curious, and above all, you want the secret, I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah, so the secret in terms of starting where they are is finding out, put it, put it in these terms, where it hurts. Uh, something is not okay. That something isn't, forget the term family dysfunction, that term, uh, gets into blaming, gets into systemic reductionism. Uh, All right, so let, let's just hold let 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 that a second. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Hold on. If you're going to answer the question, you got to let me answer the yeah, question. Where it hurts, I want to If you're going to ask me a question, Jeffrey, let Howard answer the question, right? Period. Now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> that was my strategy. Where it hurts, my Howard. Strategy. You're saying about how where do you it help, hurts. How, how do you ask those questions, Howard? How do you, you help? don't ask questions. You listen. They okay. will tell you in one way or another what's not okay. It's not where does it hurt or where's the pain necessarily. Something, hey, you, I've got five people on my uh, one, two, three, four. You want to go down that road? Somebody put up their hand who's perfect. 
who has no, gee, I wonder about this. I wonder if I could do better there. Huh, this, this doesn't feel okay to me. Somebody's got that, not in my world. So that's what you go for. It's there, it's in the language that they use. Stop pathologizing teenagers. Stop talking about how difficult it is to get them into therapy. What if I told you that we've got 30 plus years of studies and other people have studies, good studies, NIH funded studies, top of the line, demonstrating that you can engage a teenagers and their families at rates above 80 to 90 and higher percent. We have a study, the engagement rate, multiple diagnoses, juvenile justice involved, parents who were involved in criminal justice, the engagement rate is something like 97, 98%. That means they did a full course of therapy. We have a study. The cases were all assigned by the community to residential treatment, right? All of those cases, because of multiple, quote, use the terms that the field uses, treatment failures. Hey, stop putting the failure on the case and start thinking about what it is that you offer the case. I reviewed two papers today. I said, why are we reviewing these papers? Their baseline, they have no knowledge of what the specialty is. They don't know what the exit, they don't know that there are engagement models out there. So stop writing papers and pathology. This is this is the from this is the good part of what family therapy did. It said stop pathologizing people. But Howard, that, that's I, not a fairyland thing. I, I have agree told with you. you what you do. I have told you what to do. You watch the tape that Jeffrey's talking about. And this isn't about Howard. It's not about what is a Howard. Well, wait, wait a second, Howard. Wait a we second. We can define this therapy. We have. We but have this is the question, Howard. You say, I, I want to challenge you on this. You say it's not about Howard. So I, I almost always ask therapists, is it Howard or is it multidimensional family therapy? What is it? Howard. Can you? Well, well uh, yeah, I mean, is uh, it? That's very, that's making yourself feel good. You want to feel good that you're, what, that you're an artist? That all of us in, in, in Division uh, 42 and uh, whatever we are, all of us, we're artists? It's your intensity. You are so intense and passionate. I mean, any adolescent sitting across from you is going to be inspired, no, you no, know? No, you know? no. How do you listen then? Yeah. It's about listening. Like, what do you listen for? What How do you, you listen? Do? Come on, you can't think of both and something that two things exist at the same time. Oh, he's X or Y or Z, yeah, blah, blah, blah. But there's, there's a- well, then an adolescent there. could care less about the model. They're gonna care about you sitting across and you're, in, you're inspiring. I mean, I'm sitting here saying, oh. I wanna know how you listen. Now, then how are you the, teaching therapists to you listen? You are missed, that is incorrect. You are missing the boat. That's where I would start. I got plenty of therapists to start there. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'd start. We mm -hmm. wouldn't go to B until we're finished with A. And I would demonstrate to you. I would show you in my accent, in the accent of you. I would change the way that you did therapy. I would have you have different outcomes. First, go in, do a good session. First of all, even before you get to a first session, divide that, ther that session into four so parts. You and me and the group, we see videos of it. We see modules, we see checklists. Oh, that's gonna really frighten you. Come on, it's the, mod it's the 21st century here. You're telling me that this, that you're, oh, you have a medical provider. You have a dentist. You like them. I like my, I like, uh, you know, my, my internal medicine person. Fine. I think uh, that person is competent. We get along. I can share things with them. That's the end of the story. Uh, no, that particular person is super trained. I trust their mind. I trust their judgment. What if they didn't have that? It's the same thing. What are you saying that it's about power and enthusiasm? That's a part of the story. So, so what they part of it is power? The power. 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 go together. Howard, it, how much of a part of it is the person of the yes, therapist? That's interesting a topic. 
I am not going to sit. We're not going to do this. I'm only going to stay this on. Stay on this for a couple more minutes. This is so dull. It's both. Uh, uh, you, you, we're going to go down the road of how many angels are on that pen. Let's see this percent of the very. It's uh, okay. It's, so it's it's really it's fifty nine. It's fifty one to forty nine. <laughs> It's mostly Howard and that's 51. And okay, he wants to talk about mod, uh, model. Forget the word model. Do you, Jeffrey, did you do any therapy today? Did you have a session yes. today? Huh? I did. Yes. Yeah, you did. Uh, what, uh, we could drill down on that. What did you do before the session? You thought about that case in some way. You thought about what you did previously. You thought about their functioning. You have ideas in your head about what, whatever, the, whatever we're going to call it, the thing is. The diagnosis is just a representation of life that's not going so well. You've worked with that patient for a while. You thought, you thought in terms of rhythm, you, uh, uh, of how fast or slow the session should go. You thought in terms of what you bring. You were confident going into that session. You didn't go, well, maybe I'll talk about this. Maybe I'll talk about that. Yeah, like, no, you're an experienced practitioner. It's encoded. It's implicit. You have yeah, but you're talking about you're knowledge. talking about processes like, like pace that are so important. And it, you're making it sound as if everybody knows those things, Howard. That's like, what training is. Yes, but but a lot of therapists don't realize that that how important it is that we take someone where they are. If they can only play cards with us to engage them, that's where we are. And that's then the pacing. Training. So that's a, that's a better discussion. I'm trying to still I'm trying to still from you. But I'm trying to distill from you. Jeffrey, yeah. I, I'm kind of stuck. I mean, I what Howard was saying was that the key is to to listen to the pain, right? Like okay. that that's that's what I heard. Where yeah. is and, that, and what, no, 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 not exactly. We're gonna be exact here. That doesn't mean that I'm special or I'm brilliant or I'm anything. I just, that's what you think. Jeffrey, before that session, his mind went to some specific things. That's what, you, it, it, Kristen, come on, you do therapy, you train people. There's something in your mind you enter with organization. Even, when you're, even when you're a beginner, you entered yeah. with, a structure. I want to do good. I'm going to, they, you know, yeah. they enter with, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give them advice. I'm going to point things out. That doesn't One, work. Two, three. Huh? Yeah, that doesn't work. That, exactly. Like, but next. they like it if Kristen says to them, you know, that, you know what? That really stinks. That doesn't work. So we, you can't like therapy if you're in a big rush to point things out because you're so smart and something is obvious to you. You know, you know please, as a teacher, how many times you, you leave a, a, a class that you did and I've had this, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was an earth, 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 earth shatterer. You know, you'd walk out of class and your colleague or somebody said, how was class today? And I said, oh, it was really good, really good. Uh-huh. Then it took me, how many years does it take to start to hear that you, you know, a day later goes by or something else. And they don't, the students don't tell you because they're afraid of you or whatever. Uh, but then you start to listen. And in therapy world, the case doesn't come back, doesn't come back. <laughs> That's the best uh, message of all. Oh, they won't talk about something. Well, they won't talk about something. You're probably being too bossy about it. You're being too pushy. You're being uh, insensitive to someone, perhaps. Maybe you're convening family sessions where you, you've got to do subsystem sessions. Just see the parents for a bit. See the kid alone more. Drop by at school. What? He's on probation. Do you know the probation officer? Do you know the terms of that probation? What? He's got a court date coming up Tuesday. You better get to that court date and you stand there. You stand right next to him and you say, Your Honor, uh, I'm working with this kid and he's good and coming to therapy. He picks up the you calls. Up. I know the parents. Man, we're I'm rolling with this guy. And, and his family. Yeah, Boom. you show up. You show up, you track them, and you show, show up outside of the therapy office. Everywhere. You show yeah. up, and that moves them. Yeah. The therapy's over. They started, the, our family, the, the, the Miami family said, you know, oh, come on over, and we'll have coffee, and you come to my uncle's restaurant. And, you know, it is about the person of the therapist, of course. I, Look, the main I'm glad you didn't walk out on that one, Howard, because you came back to it. It's the person of the therapist. Period. 
No. Well, I'd like to be. I, 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 I jump. No. Why do you talk like that? You no, do, I, I don't believe. Oh, why do you talk like that? It's, listen to yourself. It's da, da, da. It's one thing. Why is it one? You no, we're, saying, one. We're, we're not you saying. You live in a multi-systemic world. We're trying to distill as you, you were, as you're talking by what having, elements are. Jeffrey, what does, why do they talk about, quote, common factors? Do they talk about the common factor? Or do they say common factors? Jeffrey, plural, plural. There's more than one thing that comes together when you dimensional a patient today. Yeah. Yeah, come on, come I mean, on. this is so this is so fascinating, Howard, because you're actually doing an excellent job with helping us understand the importance of like really like um, listening and feeling and paying attention and then figuring out where to insert yourself at what time and how to make it work. It's uh, right. Okay. How do you describe right. that? Pardon? I mean that that's really difficult to to describe. I mean that that I don't, I don't think so. Not no, because no. you know, do you know? Do you feel? Do you feel that you that you can get beside at least beside the world of a young person? Do you feel that you can get beside, not necessarily inside, the world of a parent or two parents? Whatever the or a family that is stressed in multiple ways part of which is where they live. Maybe uh, maybe it is a truly a violent neighborhood. Their parenting would change. Uh, gun violence and uh, access to weapons and, and, and violence interpersonally in schools on the streets. That impacts family life. Uh, that's a well-researched thing. It's not it's that you know about those things and you bring knowledge. You're not just bringing sensitivity. You're not just bringing that rock bottom, oh, okay, he's a therapist type. She, she likes people. She can get in there. She's not afraid to come into a room, close the door, and start going, okay, let, let's figure out what's, what's going on with you guys. All of this stuff over here on this piece of paper, look what it says. He's this, you're that, uh, uncom not compliant adolescence. As I did in the video that Jeffrey's talking about, I sat there with the mom, I said, She's going on 100 miles an hour. I said to her, you know, I know I, we're going to get to the, the various things and they're valid and all of these things you're talking about right now. But let me tell you one thing. I mean, I met with your son. I found this and that really kind of interesting about him. I mean, that stopped her in her tracks. Is that like the curative thing? Is that, no, you're, you, what's, what's therapy? It's this, it's a mosaic. It's a, it's a, it's a journey. It's a set of conversations. It's things that happen with an intervention. It's not singular. It's not singular, it's plural. It's linked to the 50 things, the X number of things that you do, that you bring. Where's self-disclosure in therapy, somebody might say. Well, sometimes it's something occurs to you and you, and you just do it. It's not, you don't have a therapy prescribed at that level. This therapy isn't like that. It's about principles of therapy. The family can do better than it's doing now. There is love in this woman, in this man, and you're going to go in there and on the basis of what you talk about and what you help them to speak about with you, the 2% that is love, that's very small now, that what's on the boards for her is boarding school, residential treatment, the conflict between the two of us. Hey, wait a minute, he's 16. I got other fish to fry over here with these problems or my own problems for that matter. All of that may be true, but you're going in there and you understand that when you hold some, you, you use your knowledge you know about teenagers, the difficulties of parenting. You know the therapy, fam family therapy is not all about parent training. It's not, oh, okay, let's have the parenting manual and we'll work them through, through that. You can get to that kind of approach, but that's generally, with, with our cases, all of these years, clinically referred cases, uh, you know, one, two, maybe three diagnoses going on. Uh, you've got to get to something else. And it's not that they get, 
therapy. Language really matters. It's not that they get engaged with therapy. It's not even that they get engaged with you. You know what it is? They get engaged with themselves. There's mm -hmm. something that happens where you, this thing, huh, this therapy thing, we don't even use the word therapy. Oh, we just play with different words. We're, we don't want therapy and we don't want problems and therapy and this one said to do that and oh you got to change no we want them to focus on what's okay and what's not okay for me they all Integrity. have a point of view about life about what life can be about what it should be they love their children you've got to get that on the table, on in the room, and you get that not by demanding it, not by pushing it, not by giving them something to read. You get it by listening to that two percent, the four percent, whatever is there in the story that they tell you that things are not okay, they haven't been okay for a long time. There's going to be a grain or two or X number of grains so where you're there's like hurt, listening where for there's love. regret. Pardon? You're listening. You're listening for love. You're listening for love. Yeah. Like here they are with all these atrocities around them, and you're listening for love. Yeah. Like what? And and for the for the young person, it it may be that it may be different. It may be, uh, uh, wait, something is proceeding here. Can I give you a discourse? Can I give you a case conceptualization on my diagnosis or what's wrong with me? I know it. it you know, I know, do I like, oh, I like to get in these fights all the time. I like to be on the floor, uh, you know, uh, the next morning, covered in vomit, uh, beaten up, having beaten up other people, having the cops here, oh, let's go down for another placement in juvenile. That's their objective. They like that. No, they don't like that. They don't know that life can be different. They know life can be different. They want life to be different. And You've got to get help them with each other and with the self. It's not just a family therapy. It's also a self therapy. It's for that parent, that parental team. It's about that young person and his development. So why do I say what MDFT is in those two words? Because they all catch that. That is the, they catch that spirit. They catch a spark. Well, maybe. What if? Okay. Uh, so you're saying. Uh, uh, that you're going to work with him alone. They like parents love that. And that's not a, oh, that's a strategy thing. And that gets you, gets them relaxed. No, you, you are helping the kid quote, produce new behavior for the parent. You're helping the parent through different interventions to di work with that subsystem, the parent, two parents, you're helping them. You're helping them listen more. You're help when you find the love inside of them, huh? something can change for them vis-a-vis -vis the kid. Uh, it's not just a, it's the caring. Let's put all of the work, caring, commitment. Uh, instead of calling the cops when he's, she's not home at three o'clock, how many cases do you want me to tell you about where they get in the vehicle? They get in their car and they say, I think I know where she is. Mm. And they go find them. Now yeah. that's a real different, that's listening. Outcome. That's what you love. You love a session where the two percent is becoming more. You love a session where they say, "Well, all right, you know, I think you're right." Because why? Why would they do that? Because you're haranguing them. Because you're 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 uh, um, what do you call it? A good motivational speech. No, you. They're going to do that because they start to feel different things, and and they do feel that you're a partner. They mm. do feel that there's a we. They do feel that you have expertise. I go to see my internal medicine. I'm going to talk. I trust this person. This is a good doctor. I'm lucky to have that doctor. Eventually, you, these, these are mature people I'm speaking with here. The, ca the cases Howard. relate to you. I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you teaching you. them to, while you're listening to them, you're teaching them to listen to themselves. And that, that's the motivation piece. Can you motivate them to listen to themselves and actually act on that knowledge and and yeah. for a parent to get in the car and to find their child they're listening to their hunch their intuition their knowledge and and they're actually taking responsibility to be committed to their child and to be there for them right. in, in the same That's way that you right. are yeah 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 but but i don't i we yeah, okay fine 
However, quick in the middle between listen and then the last thing that you said, the thing in the middle is a process. If we talk about what's the role, you're going to talk to Les at one of Greenberg, one of these sessions, and he's got this, he's got a way of working the um, um, so-called emotional aspect of therapy. It's a big, big topic, and we have it worked out in our own way. But, but there's a middle part that is about the, um, let's use the word, uh, stimulation or uh, of of an emotional process. Sometimes it's about, I want to have no regrets. Mm. I want to have, I want to be able to look, I did everything, man. I left it all on the parenting field, right? That's right. a good feeling, whatever happened. And you want, you, the, the kids will have, will take that up in their own way. The parent, to, to help them be afraid on that occasion, is an enormous thing. What if they get a call and then God, did, you know, God forbid, but it happens all the time. So they get a call from the cop. So he said he's in detention right now. They got to get down to detention. Whatever that, whenever that, 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 that the unit will let you in the front door, they've got to get down there. If it's an emergency room and there's blood, there's a car, again, God forbid, there's something that's happened to your, to your child. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do? You're going to, Put your luck. Maybe you put. Remember to put clothes on, or you put shoes on your feet, and you went flying out the door because you were out of your mind that mm -hmm. something is going. There you go. Now we're talking about getting connected to. We see these All words. All right, Howard. I want to shift the topic. Parenting is right. Go ahead. I want to shift. Uh, people are interested in what you. What is it that you like? What is it? What is it that you like about being a therapist? What what keep, what gets you up every morning to do this difficult work with these yeah. most challenging people? What I want to know, Howard, what you what gets you going and what gets you into this and what keeps sustains you over these decades to continue to fight for the people that you work with and do the work and not you don't you obviously don't seem burned out to me. So I want to know what what it is what's the secret sauce what do you love about it? go deep on me here i feel so privileged you know i'm 72 years old i'm not just starting out and i feel so privileged you know you have found a, a profession and, and found work that brought me and students and close colleagues, it brought me to, to life, to these, to, to people who are whatever you're gonna call them, They're, things are not okay. Life is not going well. They're not doing well in life. They've done bad things, well, you know, they, they have, so, there's something about what you see. If you do step back, if you do go deep, you see a session. It doesn't happen every session, but I'll watch a session and I'll say, when I used to start it, I said this to the, to the therapist, I didn't know, like, well, Howard, what are, you, what are you on now? Like, where are you going with this? I would say, we'd be sitting in the back or we'd watch a tape and I'd say, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> Megan, you know, we just saw development happening there, there, right there. Or we saw, right, love, commitment, a reach out, a trying again, against all, against odds. The school doesn't want him there. Probation is, you know, once they get involved in juvenile justice, the parents have been through a lot. They have their own lives their own things in their life in addition to a parent and a good but parent. how do you how do you howard all these decades still sound like you're so because vital alive you because, because, like because you're, you're close what are you close if you're a heart surgeon and, and, and so, are you serious you wait a minute That's so you crack theory. open you crack open this person's chest right Oh, okay. And I got all the X's and O's and people have watched me for thousands of hours. But in the end, on some days and some occasions, they have to be thinking about these two things that are in front of them. They are my hands. 
I am holding the heart, whatever, the brain, the gallbladder, whatever it is. You're touching something here. Yes. I'm touching something. And that's how I feel. I well, feel we are in the presence of, ama of, of amazing things that yeah. bad thing, and that's not all good. A yes, bad so thing that have happened. Why, why, and, why are I, and I know, and I know that I, I'm going to leave this all on the field. And if we get a break, that can be helpful. And mm. those therapists that we, that work like this, and I'm not even saying it's beyond MDFT, please. But uh, why, MDFT, why, please. why do you think therapy, psychotherapy is so demeaned in the sort of the medical sort of uh, zeitgeist that we're somehow, we just, we just sit with people and we, we chat and, and what, I mean, why, why aren't, aren't we thought of as like heart surgeons? Why do, why, why are we devalued? Uh, these other guys, because these other guys, let's make sure, let's make believe this is pills. Uh, what? Uh, anxiety disorders. Yeah, I, I got that. Oh, 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 the depressive disorder. Oh, I got that too. Oh, oh the aut autism spectrum. Yeah. Oh, oh, psychosis. Oh yeah. We will, we, you gotta, gotta come in. They're going to be, a, they have it, they, right. Quote, think they have it covered and the world believes it it has been covered oh please but how many movies have you seen how much is it in culture oh yeah my son my daughter's gonna get married my son's gonna get married and he's gonna marry a doctor and all of the time oh he's gonna marry marry a doctor well it, I just my job is definitely successful what successful parents I have been how would they say oh yeah I'm gonna marry a psychotherapist everybody goes well yeah. You know, half, half of them go, oh, geez. And so now we have things on TV and you have the couple therapy show. Oh, please. That's hopeless, Jeffrey. I don't, I'm not going to worry about that one. I, I'm really not going to, I'm not. I know what's going on there, more or less. I'm not an expert. But I know it's, that's not the fish I'm going to fry. But how do we help, how do we help the next generation right. of therapists? You should ch help the next generation by kicking ass in these training programs by changing training as we know it. People are getting degrees and nobody is watching them do work. Or they cover evidence-based therapies or whatever they cover, evidence-informed therapies. Forget all the names, forget all, the, uh, all, all of the, 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 um, the, the, the selling that's involved. Do they work with families? Because if, if you deal with young people and you're not involving the family in a systemic way, you know, you're missing the boat. You don't know what you're doing then. You you are you're not doing state of the science therapy in your code of ethics. It said you will do everything that is possible. Yes, that you know about, but you will bring the best possible care to that patient. All right, I have, a question, I have a question from the um, from the participants. How is MDFT different from structural family therapy I'm and sure. other types of family therapy such as FFT? Uh, the, 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 the short answer is really the multiple units in MD. The main the main organizational divider in an MDFT is that your work in one, two, three, four domains of existence and development. The adolescent as an individual, the parent or parents as a system subsystem. Three, the family as a system. And four, the extra familiar, the community. Those are different realities. There's different assessments that you'll make of that young person alone. What are their skills? What are, how are they doing with milestones? You, you're not gonna do it by asking about, asking about it directly necessarily, but sometimes you, you can, sometimes you'll use a, a, an instrument to get at areas of life that are not okay for them. So you're going to four places. One, you're seeing them as whole, W-H-O-L-E. You are also seeing them as interlinked parts. What that means is that the functioning of me as an individual parent is related to what's happening in those other domains. You can assess me as a parent with my spouse, right? That unit has integrity. You can assess it. You can define main characteristics, but you're also going to understand me as a parent, me and my partner as parenting the, uh, the, the adolescent or children uh, in, in interaction. And those areas of functioning are, are influencing each other. 
The fifth thing, in addition to those four areas, the fifth thing is the real secret sauce. And that is, as Jeffrey said, uh, earlier remark, sort of a process factor. That is those four areas, my work with the kid, with the parents, with the family, and with the outside, meetings at the school, meetings with probation, uh, peer group systems, those four things are, are orchestrated, they're maneuvered, they're brought in front of work in the other. That is, my work with the teenager has implications for him, his her capacity to speak, to have confidence in speaking, to uh, be able to say what's okay, what's not okay. That has a lot of relevance for me as a therapist because I want to help her individual development but I want to have her bring those aspects of new development, of new selves. I want to have her bring those to my work in that second domain, that second area. So there's work with me and the girl alone, and there's work with me and the girl, me and the mom and father. There's work with the family together. There's work with the outside. But I'm working those pieces huh, vis-a-vis each other. A good session on parenting is followed up by, you know, I met with your parents last night, and I, I know you're just not up for this at all. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's things you, that are bothering you, um, but I'm going to ask you something. I, I wonder, like, if we had a meeting in the end of this week and saying this to the girl, would you give the parents, would you give your mom some time to talk to you about what's on? I, yeah, I, I know these things are on. On your mind, okay. You don't want to do it that way, okay. So let's start with what you what's on your mind. Otherwise, you're not. And they threaten you, and they walk out of sex. The parents do. Every everybody does because they're they're upset. They don't see a, a a pathway to hope. You're going to generate hope with me. Hope is an internal. You don't provide hope. You don't provide motivation by going to um, the uh, what was the social psychologist Baumeister's phrase about the um the con the consolidate it's like sort of like I, i've had enough and there's a tipping point it's sort of like there there's an aspect of change that's about that that when you're there and you're offering yes yourself and this way that you do things which are inseparable there's a mobilization that can come from me oh at that moment i'm feeling hope the hope and the motivation, yeah, but those are, they're just, they're, they're transient. It's not going to last. Once I put that in motion and I come in and I talk to you, maybe I'm embarrassed about talking to you. I feel shame, this therapy stuff, you know, I don't know, Jeffrey. You know, I'd, I'd love to believe in your profession, but you, you don't understand how bad I feel. So we go to them, we go with them into what we used to say, we go to parental health. Let me tell you how bad this guy is being to me. We go to the hell that is the life of that teenager, of that young woman. We go there and it's not a, oh, you let them, you know, piss and moan about things and drone. No, no, there's pain. There, there's, if I start talking about that stuff, it's not, oh, oh you're just letting the, the patient complain and go on and tell stories. Uh, let me tell you something. Um, what, what else do you do in therapy? You whip out a, 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 a book of a skills and you have them read that over about six or 10 times and then they're going to have good social skills or good, good reflective skills. No, you talk with them like any psychotherapy. Family therapy invented some things. It didn't invent, it didn't invent everything. Oh, it's still a psychotherapy. I'm just interrupting you because this feels so important. What I'm hearing you say is that you believe that there's a reason why this adolescent is hurting as much as they are. There is a reason. Something's happening. Something, something's happening. Yeah. Something in something from this multiple things probably. Uh, so, you, you, okay. so I want to, Barbara. I know you have a couple of questions you want to ask. So I want to just wow. make a little make a, create a little space. Uh, oh, that's so nice. Son, you you've done a lot of. Um, reading of Howard's work and I know, what, what do you want to know from Howard since we have- uh, well, First of all, I just, I just want to say how much I'm enjoying this, Howard. I'm just feeling <laughs> your passion. And um, I Don't just love the way the other panelists are responding. I'm kind of like spellbound. 
but back to the topic of training, because I do yes. teach in a university and yes. you know work with students in practicum. And this is kind of a sneaky way to get back to the personhood of the yeah. therapist. Uh -huh. But um, if you were interviewing prospective trainees, um, what are the what are the personhood qualities yes. that you would want before they enter the training program? Yeah, yeah, right. <clears throat> That's a good one. I like that. I, I, that, I, that was hot, Barbara. <laughs> the first thing I think in regard to that is, is uh, what I would call like a note to self. That is, uh, I'm going to put an asterisk next to what you said, and then I'm going to try and answer it in a straight way. But the very first thing is I have an asterisk there, and the asterisk is, okay, now Howard, you know that these thing, these things that uh, that Barbara is is mentioning here, hmm, sometimes it's easy to recall them. Sometimes it's easy to produce them. Sometimes it's even e e it's even easy to fake them, to fake uh, caring and concern. And you know, if I'm fishing for something um, like that which I have an asterisk by. The asterisk means, now be careful with this because these things don't have the predictive validity that, that you really think or that you want them to have. The best predictive validity is, uh, is a, a role play or bringing a three minutes of a tape in or two or uh, three different, if it's a family therapy thing, uh, if it's an attempt to assess a systemic capability or more importantly, even it's an attempt to assess what language do they use about the things that they see. That's what that would be fabulous if That's I could hot. get them because yeah. if because we could go down you know psychopathology lane. If I'm hearing oh they really love diagnosis and so, oh God bless well we all love and need diagnosis. <laughs> okay, That's terrific. Next. You know, next yeah. paragraph, what are you going to do, okay? Uh, and it, so they start talking. Uh, so he's not in school, and the, my mom has had it, and there's only the two of them in the house, and you present a vignette, or better, if you, you know, what we like to do now is you get little clip, little a minute, two minutes of a, of a video, and let them in whatever way they see and say, and the brain, their brain comes forward. It's like therapy in a way, you, you want the self to come forward. You want a sharing right there, then and there, them and you. With the case, you want the problem, as Mnuchin used to say, to be in the room, to bring it in the room. That was the breakthrough. That you want, the, that's the secret sauce of secret sauces. And you want to talk about not giving credit where credit is due, that psychotherapy, you know, has its head somewhere where it shouldn't be. And it really should have that aspect. And I'm going to write, Jeffrey wants something written up. We're going to call it enactment or something like that. We're going to call this process dimension. And we're going to put that right in, in Jeffrey's, you know, his his the thing his system his teaching system but anyway the, the barber thing so I'm looking for the words that come out of their mouth I'm in my mind I'm looking for you know really thinking about psychopathology I'm looking for how they it like mechanism it's really a mechanisms of change thing how they think you don't use fancy words like that it gets everybody you know scared away and you don't need, you don't need all those terms you don't need it you know you, 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 have, you have a broken arm, you go to the emergency room, uh, there should be, speaking of personal, there should be, if you sit there for four hours in pain with a broken arm, that's bad care. We don't have, quote, enthusiasm, you know, all of your enthusiasm about being helpful to people, huh, that's not coming forward here. My arm really hurts and somebody back there knows how to fix a broken arm, we got protocols on that, you know. Uh, in in therapy, it's it's the same kind of thing. You are going for where things are are, are not okay. You don't need something super. Initially, you don't need something super fan, fancy because you've got to get 
You have the core of your job. Therapists, this is, this is they, so don't know what their, they don't know what their job is. They think it's teaching. They think it's pointing out and being wise. Look, we're you having, know about people. We're having, having, Howard, we're having such a fascinating moment because you, you may not know this, but Barbara is like expert at core conflict formulations really being able to go around and around and around to identify the correct problem. And so I, I, I'm i loving this conversation between the Thank two of you. you. Yeah. Well, I like that work very much. I was in, you know, as I said, I was in Philadelphia. Uh, I, I didn't know, you know, the, the great, you want to talk about the, uh, as Kristen said, the great ones, but if we're going to go down that memory lane, go ahead and put Lester Laborski uh, uh, you know, on that list and the scene, and now they're, they're, some of those guys are my, uh, and women are my age, you know, so this goes back and I, uh, uh, less, and people like that, you know, in psychotherapy, oh, were there teams then and was there competition and was there, as Hoffman used to say, a battle of the brand names? I don't, back then, oh, I guess there was, but I know, I know for a fact, I, I recall uh, they would talk about, uh, you know, UPenn and the ones over in psychiatry who, who gave Mnuchin a real hard time, by the by. But they knew that they knew Lester Laborski. They, they knew uh, what he was trying to do. They respected that, right, that aspect of work, which is, wait, we can define, can we define everything? Oh, okay, so now you're all science-based. And you can define 100%. And you do that intervention at session three, and it's going to unlock. We use phrases like the secret sauce. We're sort of, we sort of mean it, but we're sort of kidding. Because the asterisk for all of us, come on. The asterisk for all of us, if there is magic in therapy, you want to talk about what would keep you going? Come on. I, I want to be in those sessions. It is life that I'm seeing. It is love. It is, no, I will do anything here. It is, you know what? This is fucked up. I am not going to live my life. I am not an addict. I am not a dropout. No, you got me wrong on this. I'm going to get out of this, you know, situation that those moments, oh my God, are you serious? That you're part of that? You're witnessing that? You're, you're in there holding like this, you and them, them and you. Oh my God, what do you want from a- from now, a now you're answering my question. Yeah. Yeah, you got, you got there, man. That was, that was it. That, that <laughs> is it. I got two minutes to go. I got to, I'm yeah. just teasing you, Jeffrey. You did, <laughs> you did. And I mean, that is the question. What oh, keeps us in the room? And you just, you just answered it, I think so personally and brilliant like it's when those moments happen mold. it's just it's like when you're the heart surgeon and you and you fix the heart yeah. and saying yeah. this person then goes out and lives at the purpose yeah, are, you, are, you, are, you, are you and well it's like you, you guys are teachers and students and you'll have you, you can't keep up with the cases like like if we could imagine that but you've had call somebody sends you a mail maybe it's about the covid maybe maybe it's about something else and you're on the phone and the one says to you, you know, and they'll bring, and they'll, they'll, I'm talking about a couple of calls I've had in the last six conversations in the last six months. And they were uh, men, in this case, they were men. Uh, and and they, they, they talked about them being young men. This is in the late seventies when we were together. I just, just starting up you know, in Philly, in Philly at Temple University. And they talked about what the teaching was. And oh, I remember Howard and he was with the families and we were starting the clinic. And they're talking about it like I can think about it like it was, you know, a month ago or yesterday. And I, just, I was really moved. I didn't say anything to them other than, you know, thank you. But you, but with, with cases, it's the same kind of thing. It, it, you know, it, it, we don't know about the failures enough. I, I, I'm singing a happy tune there. And I don't, I'm not naive enough to think, oh yeah, what? And because you're science-based therapy, that, that's happening with all your cases. And no, you know, it's not, we're, we're, it could, you know, what we do, what these evidence, what these science-based therapies do, come on, this is good. That, that, that's asked and answered. Is it better than standard care in community? Yeah, it's better than both. But 
But the, come on, there are mysteries here. In the last right? minute, in the Absolutely. last minute, in the last minute that we have, what do you want to tell all the therapists who are out there in the front lines watching? So what, what words do you want to share with them before we, uh, we'll, we'll let people who need to go sign off and then we'll, we'll do a little bit of debriefing. But what do you want to say before people um, who have to go, go? That uh, I, wish, I wish, I have a wish, I have a hope for them. Can they, that when they dig down and they think, you know, there's, there's a lot more. Somebody asked me, well, why do you want to do this? Oh, I, I think I can be good with people or I think I want to help people. That's an, oh, that's an okay start. And I would say to them, you know, I hope that you, A, find a way, find it inside and find others that can keep that reflection, can keep that quest going. Like, what's it about for me? And secondly, that I can face, that I can face things like, you know, I got to get better. You know, this is pretty hard if I really, you know, I don't like what happened in that supervision, but uh, it's not about the supervisor. Oh, the supervisor was mean to me. The supervisor should never be mean to you. That's, they shouldn't uh, challenge you more than, more than, uh, than, than uh, what? It's, it's like a, a half full, I mean, a 50-50 kind of thing. Sure, it looks like and feels like a, a challenge that's about the self, but it's not about that. And hopefully that supervisor is sensitive enough to you and latches on with you to that thing that got them in this in the beginning. There's okay, so we're, much, we're going to, we're going to have to so stop. Um, out there, man. We're, we're going You've to got to go out and get, get help, get the info, get the mentoring. You don't right. do these things alone. Thank you. We're going to have to, we're going to have to stop this part of our presentation. Thank you all for attending. We are going to uh, hang around and do a little bit of debriefing. Thank and everyone you. to stay and watch. Thank you, Howard. We're going to Thank we're going to hang Howard. around. I'm inspired. We're Thank starting you. our debriefing Thank now. Thank you, Sir Jeffrey. Bye. <laughs> so we're so we can hang out if we want for a couple of minutes. And wow, just, that uh, that was awesome. I I we should do this first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. I'm ready. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> Have a drink yet, or I didn't. Oh, have Howard, a, why don't you uh, drink and uh, and didn't have any like CBD or you know, <laughs> <laughs> piled up because Stop you know, what, you all, we, why? what made you so mad that you're gonna walk out on me? <laughs> I do that, I do that just to see if you're gonna take it, man. Because, <laughs> you know what? I was, I was thinking as we were going that that and what I wanted to actually talk about in the debriefing here is how your how your your interventions with us was stirring us up in such interesting ways in our I'm own in our own particular <laughs> ways and I'm thinking that's what you're doing therapy. Beautiful. Mm. Jesus Jeff Jeffrey and you don't say that on the air? No uh, well you guys, you know, the people are watching again they're, most they're, of the people are still on. I think they they uh most, yeah, hardly the, anyone signed off. So uh this is this is usually the most interesting I part felt of the challenge to listen. I was just like my my focus like heightened, my awareness yeah. heightened. I was like, it was happening. <laughs> well then then I thought I was gonna retaliate and I say, well, no, I'm gonna walk out. I'm I'm done. <laughs> And, but I didn't, but um, yeah, I felt. What do you think, Barbara? You were like. Um... Well, I have to say, this felt like a family for a while because I, I was thinking, like speaking to myself, uh, <laughs> thinking I wanted to say Jeffrey to you and Chris, and I was, I let the guy finish talking. <laughs> and, but then I realized that Howard was perfectly capable of getting the message across. Like I loved it, Howard was like, you ask a question, I've got to answer it. And I just, you know, it sort of felt all of a sudden like just so spontaneous. And people who know me know that I am usually the most talkative person in the room. And I am yes. a New Yorker. I interrupt like crazy. And I'm, I'm real. oh my God, I can't find a space to get in. So I thank you, Jeffrey, for inviting me. But I, I just loved it. This is, I, I can't wait to, you know, have a link to the recording and share it with other people. It was like a family so dinner in a way with, 
hours that it was leaving, and I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Howard's like that. No, Howard's like that. <laughs> Howard's like that uncle that you want to come, but when he gets there, it's yeah. like, oh my God. <laughs> Who invited half? <laughs> oh my God. That's it. That's it. But Howard, um, you know what I, I, you know what I love? It's, I love it about you is I love the passion that you have for what you do. It's contagious. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's so easy to get burned out in this field. And I, it's just so interesting that you work with the most burned out population, the, burned out, the burning out population therapist. Because I did that kind of work for years yeah. early on in the career. I feel, I feel for them. I, the therapists, I, I do. I, a long time, I, I, I was too. Uh, and I didn't. I didn't understand. I wasn't. I wasn't empathic. Were enough. you a conduct disorder <laughs> kid? No, no, no. I was afraid to. I had friend, friends, friends. No, that wasn't my group. Because that's what, what what I when we when we went out to dinner with Mike Mahoney that night. I think yeah. he was one of those. He was one of those um, just amazing, amazing therapists. And um, I think he had a tough. I think he had a tough, like adolescence and early adulthood. And then, and then I think he used that in a way to come around. Um, huh. but I'm always st struck by how our how our own development affects why and how we get into well, this. My, well, my my father was a cop. I have okay. all cops and all cops in the family of the men. Wow. Mother's side, mom, my 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 grandfather, my maternal grandfather was a cop sergeant. My my dad was a police police his whole life. He, he went up through the ranks, became chief of police in Lynnhurst, New Jersey. You know, oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. Died and died and gone to heaven. Well, here we are. Oh man, they they were great. I'm just, you know, right time, right place. So I got I got Born and you know really good, uh, the salad, just terrific people. Uh, problems of course, but uh, uh, that was that that was un unreal. What 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 a family could be? Were we a closed family? I can think of it like that. It was, it was, it was it's, we functioned good. We were oh the, oh the littles they're like exceptionally close and they're off a of TV now. <laughs> But we weren't a bit, uh, you know, mad at each other all the time, or we went through life. Uh, I don't know ups downs. He had they had money problems. My mom had this and that, and he did too. Uh, health and health things, whatever. It was all it was normalized to me. The the shit that I saw though was very upsetting. My, uh, you know, Roger and Stephen guys. Uh, Guys that are dead, and uh, I'll say it was New Jersey. It's just you know, middle class, lower middle class, yeah, yeah. Jer North Jersey, and uh, we vote in New York. We big shots. Yeah, vote in New York. Go and drink. There were no drugs really, but but that was oh yeah, we you know big shots, and you get in vehicle, and the things thing you know when you 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 all teenagers and this and that, and you yeah. look back and driving back. You know, coming out of the Holland Tunnel on those roads, those dark roads from from the tunnel to, to North Jersey block, yeah. as as could be, and you got a big, you know, fifty six Buick, yeah. uh, Delta eighty eight Buick. I mean, you we could make. Bruce, this. Were you listening to Bruce Springsteen? I don't remember. We were so loaded, you know, half the time. Who knows? We were just ridiculous and just yeah. um, touching touching wood right now. You yeah. know, for that. Uh, that we made it. I don't know, but it was, it was these, it wasn't just that. It's a, they were so, could, could you imagine that we were family therapy? Well, but, but look, the, 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 the Laborski stuff or those days, the human potential movement, all those things were coming together. The Gestalt therapy, I, I, you know, in graduate school, I'd run down to the Gestalt Institute of Chicago because they had a film of Earl. Yep. And what Virginia Satir is going to be there? Oh my God! We get okay. So by then I was, uh, you know, I wasn't. The high school was 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 precarious, but but by the time I got finished that and get to school, graduate school and all that, it was very cool. Yeah, it was it was an amazing time for us to um, for I think the three, the three of us to 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 come out because I you know I went to Mnuchin's. Uh, I mean. 
they would come to the hospital I worked at was a family therapy hospital called Elmcrest Psychiatric Institute. And they yeah. were pioneers in family therapy and they brought in all these people. They would, do, uh, um, uh, not, uh, what's the, uh, Carl Whitaker. Yeah, yeah, sure. would, 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 he would He would get on stage and it was a small hospital. He, he'd have a family come up and yeah. I'd watch him work. And I think, I don't know, I don't have a, 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 no idea what he's doing, but something's happening there. Um, he, geez, I, he couldn't talk about, he couldn't explain what he did. Oh, but, he wasn't oh, good with that. He was, mention Benin, he had Benin. Benin. He was all right. He was better, much better in his writings. That was Benin's Benin. writing, that structural family, you know, me. You, you go back, you go, would, you go back and just read a paragraph here and there. Yeah. I mean, he has lyricism in there in addition yeah. to just yeah. plain English that, that he could get to the, just the soul, to the soul. Right, just the soul of the but work. He also had that that fabulous pattern recognition ability that I think geniuses have. That he he could see in the family system the structural dy the, the, um, the structural um, dynamics and um, and then begin to move them around. And I love those when he was codifying those structural. Yeah, that, was no, that was novel. Right. Right. That was that, that was, was novel. I mean to sit right you now because you're sitting in the room. There, there's the manifestation of the you know the systems view. You yeah. put a, put a bunch of people together, and he would always say, "Oh, you know these group the group therapists. They think they're onto something special. Well, maybe they are, but it's the family therapy. That's a different kind of group they talk about because the natural because life is going to come out yeah, whether like you the, want it or it's not. In the room, right? It's in the room. In the room, and and, like and this one could pay as you say. Uh, behavior in context. Those were behavior in context. And where it hurts. Oh, um, if you could, if you could take that, the special sauce. Okay, we got that. You want the, the worries about the new ones? Imagine we take that and we and we get th those four things: capacity, sensitivity to where it hurts, person in context. Put people together and watch. Listen to the way the teacher talks about the kid go make a visit, go to court one time. It changes everything for you if you have the mindset to like let it change you. Right? Yeah. It's not an intellectual That's thing. Right. Everybody I know, I mean, your age, my age, we think back and they'll say, come on, you've heard this, everybody. Oh, and I was back and I was working this job and we had this one came in and we saw that video. It's the same, that's the thing. Well, when those, when those Gloria tapes came out, there's something about that. That we all like. Yes. Did uh, what? These yeah. people. Yeah. Gonna, okay, the men thing and the authoritarian. Yeah, all true, true. But it's the product, unfortunately, of the times. But but uh, but you recall this as as, as breakthrough stuff. It just uh, it was great. Yeah. So to come and that's what that's what upsets me now. Like, geez, there's all of this stuff that's happened and in the ones that we see we're. You know we're out and about in in the world in these in programs and all of these states and in Europe and this and that and when they're starting out, I mean they again they have good intentions but they were misserved these kids these these master students they were they're they're being misserved in school, but some some programs I mean let, let's not go down the lane of the you know the online programs maybe there's a way to make this work I don't know enough. But if we're not watching, you got to watch. If you're going to help me be a therapist, come on. I totally you're agree. Watch me do an interview. You got it. You got to watch your uh, watch. Come videos. on, and that's, that's not right. Yes, that's not fair for them. I know. I know. So I, that's see, you're, I feel you're, I, you're doing it. Bothers it that bothers me, you know. So that's another thing. I mean, I. Um, I, I get as upset about all of that. And I, that's why I like, oh my God, you're so lucky that we, I, me, the colleagues, the teams, geez, aren't we, that we made this work all these years and we're out there. We did the big studies, the hard studies and the, collected all the data. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not as hard as you think because it's not you. But it's a, it's a team. It's such a, it's such a cliche. You know, you go up there and you say it's a, thank you for this or thank you for that but you say it's a team they'll go oh he's just saying that oh, come on no that's how life is if we're lucky hey if we're lucky how life that that's how life is these parents don't feel like they're connected to anything those kids feel like oh yeah i go to school i hide 
I stay and didn't know who, who you're hanging with, right? There's the, tell me about who you're hanging with and maybe you'll go to the school one day and you'll hang around there at 2.30 or 3.30 and you'll see things, it's like the home visit thing. Like, wow, <laughs> the eyes go open. Like there's the, I'm, talk about continuing education, right? Oh my gosh. Shall anyway, we? You guys were so nice. And I, I, you know, let me tell you, let me tell you, please let, please let me tell you one thing. Uh, is this a is this a sample of like normal <laughs> normal Howard behavior? Mostly, I, the true answer between me you and the lamppost. Mostly yes. Why do I going to say mostly yes? Because from the day Jeffrey really, I find uh, I, I I like. I, I, uh, I like to be myself with Jeffrey. I don't know what it is. I, I can come, I really feel, I know him, do I know him well? I know what he's about, I feel, in the field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He stand, what he stands for, what he's tried to do all of this time, you know? So I, I think there's this good soul, oh man, he's out there and he's worried about the same sort of stuff that goes on that I am. He feels the work. He has a brain. He really wants to conceptualize stuff with his unified thing. He thinks integratively. So there was a meaning of minds from the beginning, but intellectually and all of that, uh, you know, and how we go back professionally. But the but the key thing is is comfort. When he said, you know, could we do this? I said, oh, I I thought, yeah. I I, I looked forward to it from the minute we started talking about. It. I knew I would. I could be okay. I know I can really come forward and, you know. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Wow. That's he's, so great. he's a good guy, you know. So you like to hang around with good, you know. I miss uh, that. I don't have yeah. that, you know. I, I, I we mean, all miss that, especially when, when you know, this COVID. Totally. Yeah. Totally. But you're doing it. You know, this is really a nice. It is, but it's not the same as if we're sitting in the same room and having a drink together. And, you know, and, and look what you're doing something. with this. See, this is really, this is nice what you're doing. Uh, this is gonna. Let's have this. Let's have. Let's have have an impact out of this. You yes, know? we will. We will. Yeah. So I guess we're gonna wrap up. Can uh, I compliment Chris? you yeah, too, Jeffrey? Please. I mean, no. I'm glad that I'll walk out of the room if you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going for it. I mean, I'm glad that Howard spoke up because I I know for myself, like you have a way of just um you know giving me permission to just be myself and then celebrating me in the process too. So. I know that I'm much like braver, like wiser uh, and have a hell of a lot of fun expressing that because of how you are. And like this interview, like, you know, we're all, you know, in different parts of the country, different orientations, different jobs, but it really does, it did feel like family, Barbara. I mean, I felt like there was this like coming together and we were yeah. in it. Yeah. And, yeah, and so I feel so grateful to you, Jeffrey, for oh, making it happen and finding all of us and bringing us all together. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, I have to add one word, Jeffrey. You are immense. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm going to sleep well tonight with all this happening. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. And thank everybody for watching by now. Amazing. You, you're really solid. Thank you. Okay. Thank you bye, all. Bye. Bye. Bye.